start. We've picked up in the green, now nudging 10,300. The breath as well has recovered well into the green as we speak. But JSPL, that's the one which is in focus. Remember, we reported to you first. They're looking to sell their Oman business, the promoter arm, for $1 billion. And here's VR Sharma from JSPL chatting with my colleague Mubina Kapasi. Deal actually is a very uh, very positive deal in terms of how to deleverage uh, the debts in India and uh, overall balance sheet how to make it more healthier. Uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, the Oman is a profit making company. There is no doubt. So we have EBITDA of about 150 million dollars. Uh, so we gave this exercise to two companies. One is Y and the other is. Uh, Alpen Investments, they are based out of Dubai and Middle East. So uh, the, the extensive study was done. So then uh, they found that EBITDA to uh, EV, uh, when we calculate the EV, it should be uh, seven times of EBITDA. So EBITDA was more than a little more than 150 million. So that's why this deal goes to a level of as per EV enterprise value of more than a billion dollars and uh, uh, there were uh, many uh, uh, bidders out of that they shortlisted three the three top bidders and uh, the highest bidder is uh, templar and uh, that is a mauritius based company it is a uh, company uh, floated by owners of jspl uh, so uh, now Subject to the approval from board, subject to approval from shareholders, subject to approval from the lenders in Oman. So this deal will be through. Now, of course, most important debt reduction. I mean, that's the purpose as well of the this deal. Purpose is to think... reduce, uh, the purpose is to reduce yes. the debt in, in, from the balance sheet. And uh, so that uh, the Indian lenders uh, are also comfortable. And this is what our uh, commitment was. We have already brought it down to a level of about 34,000 crores. And uh, with this deal going through, uh, the overall debts would be less than uh, 28,000 crores. And uh, then over and above 28,000 crores, whatever the accruals will be there in this year, current year, uh, that will be additional payment. So that uh, <clears throat> we'll try to bring it down to below 25,000 crores. Uh, where will the debt repayment priority be? Because you have overseas debt and you have domestic debt. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Jindal Sharid itself also has quite a bit of debt. So how will this debt uh, essentially be paid for? You see, uh, the uh, when we make a consolidated balance sheet, so now the Jindal Sharid will be out of the console balance sheet. <clears throat> so it will be uh, standalone Indian operations only, as far as the steel is concerned. So today, uh, whatever assets and liabilities are there in Jindal Shadid will be going to Templar Mauritius. So uh, the the JSPL's balance sheet will be uh, uh, will be very naive and uh, very simple, so that the lenders here in India they will be more comfortable, and that was a uh, continuous uh, dialogue with the lenders in India that how to uh, do the divestment and how to reduce the burden of debt uh, from the company. And this is what we have done. So how much will domestic debt reduce and, and how much would the overseas debt reduce by roughly? You see, I can share uh, with you all details. Uh, uh, but the major point is domestically uh, we were uh, put together domestic and overseas, it was 34,000 crores. Now, this will come with this deal, this will come down to around 28,000 crores. And uh, finally, out of the current years 2020 uh, financial year, uh, the current ongoing financial year, whatever the approvals will be there, that will be over and above payments so that the debt is reduced to below 25,000 by the end of uh, March 2021. Okay. Uh, what's the debt uh, to be serviced in FY21 for both overseas and domestic post, you know, this uh, entire yeah, this repayment? What, yeah, this is what I told you, because whatever the debts are serviced, these are online, and uh, we are paying regularly. There is no default, and uh, all the payments are being made on time. 
So this is the reason that we are in a position to uh, reduce the debt. And the operations are pretty smooth. Uh, we have done uh, a, in this particular quarter, April, May, June, we have done a very, very, very good uh, production and sales in uh, three and a half months of time, that is uh, lockdown one from 20th of March to 30th June. So it is about 100 days time. In 100 days, uh, we have exported uh, close to 10 lakh tons of steel. That is 1 million. So company is doing well. Operations are smooth. Costs are under control. And uh, the atmosphere is very congenial for uh, poor sector industry in the country. So our aim is to uh, to be a part of India growth story. And uh, this is how we are putting more and more focus on the Indian operations. Okay, all right. Um, now, you know, Shadid was still um, doing very well, able to service his debts, etc. too. So, uh, uh, but the problem, I think, was Australia. I mean, you know, everyone's been watching out now. The next trigger, you could say, in overseas operations is now restructuring of the Australian business, which will you know, eventually be important for repayment, refinancing, etc. So is there any timeline uh, because of that? And and if you could also share what's, you know, uh, the debt situation over there, how are you dealing with that? You see, we are working very seriously uh, how to do the divestment of Australian assets. As I told you, our uh, aim is to uh, focus on uh, Indian operations. And uh, we are looking for... Uh, the right partners, but we are not under distress, so there is there, there will not be any distress sale. Uh, as soon as some uh, right uh, partner comes, either uh, in a joint venture, like for example, 51, 49 percent, or maybe even more, we can uh, we can divest even up to 70 percent, 75 percent, and we'll be happy as a, a small stakeholder, so that we can keep getting our booking goal. So we are looking now, there are a couple of proposals from uh, various companies and uh, some of our consultants and the financial uh, advisors, they are working on this. I think we should find some solution by the end of 2021. And uh, the moment there is some deal about to be clinched or about to be declared, we'll come back to you. Okay, so we'll wait a year more than for the uh, Australian operations, but I'm certain uh, you know there'll be something for that as well. But what are the other assets you're looking to monetize? You know, I mean, and 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 you have a, a certain amount that you hope you will collect from asset monetization to bring down the debt. Uh, and also, we heard uh, you know from sources that Botswana's mining operations are perhaps on the block. So if you could just throw some light on that. You see, the overall overseas assets uh, I'll name you. First of all, it is Oman. Uh, the number two is Mozambique coal mines, coking coal mines. Number three is uh, South African uh, coal mines. That is also anthracite coal and coking coal partly. 